day, and I'm pleased and honored to be a part of this. And what I'd like to contribute now is a little bit of the history of this very specific tree and how it came to be here. The historic tree grove that you see that extends off to the right started in 1995 when I started collecting offspring of trees that I thought were significant in U.S. history. But within a few years, I saw that there were many trees in New Jersey that deserved that honor and for the most part were being ignored. So I traveled the state over the course of several years trying to find all these old trees and as best as possible collect offspring, seeds that we could grow here at the college and eventually include in this, in, in this grove. So to specifically talk about the Basking Ridge white oak, that tree I always recognized and if anyone asked me what was my favorite tree in New Jersey, that would be my answer. I consider it to be the most majestic oak, the most majestic tree in the entire, entire state. So I knew immediately that at some point I wanted to include an offspring here in the grove. But oak trees, especially old oak trees, don't reproduce acorns on a regular basis. So even though this project started in 1995, it really wasn't until 2001 that the tree produced a banner crop of acorns. There were so many acorns dropping off that tree that year that it was like walking on marbles underneath, uh, underneath it. So with the help of a student, we started collecting them. And I would have been pleased if we got a couple dozen uh, acorns when we initially made the trip up there. So our, to our surprise, the tree had produced so many. So we collected two five-gallon buckets full of acorns from the tree. Now, I knew that I realistically only needed one, but you never take a chance that the seeds are going to germinate. So we brought all the seeds back to the college. We germinated them in the greenhouse. And as it turns out, the germination rate was excellent. So we had hundreds of these, of these seedlings. So at that point, I decided, I have the seedlings. I might as well do something productive with them besides the one that I want. So I made these seedlings available to school groups, municipalities, anybody who was interested. Some even went back to the Presbyterian Church where they used some of those seedlings in a fundraising uh, project. But interestingly enough, I knew I wanted one for here. And this one, this is the pick of the litter. So as I grew these trees in the greenhouse, eventually moved into an outside nursery, I always kept my eye on which one is going, doing the best. This one was by far the most vigorous. It, it had the most perfect shape. It grew most rapidly. It just seemed to be the best, the best one. So that one was saved. Pretty much all the others were eventually given away. And <clears throat> it took a while to get this tree to a size to be planted here. So it was planted in this location behind me in 2010. So it's had 10 growing seasons in this location. And you can see how much it's grown because when I planted it here, it probably wasn't much more than five and a half feet in, in, in height. So it's done exceptionally well. And I'm sure when this tree gets moved, if it's anywhere close to its parent in terms of vigor and long le longevity, it's going to just do fine in its, near, you know, its new home. And I'm, and I'm pleased it's going there. Uh, just as a final note, I will be able to replace this tree with another progeny. There is a small nursery over on the other side of the pond where one remaining sibling to this was left in the nursery. And quite frankly, more than anything else by my neglect, I kind of forgot about it. So now I'm paying attention to it. So the plans are at this point, I'm going to nurture that tree over the next year or two. I'm hoping to plant it in its place right behind me, 2018, maybe 2019. Thank you very much.